Hi so hey everyone, um, welcome to this uh, latest series of videos. This is going to be part one of my Ride London hints and tips video. Um, so just a little bit about the ride um, for anybody who doesn't know. Uh, this is a 100 mile route that starts and finishes in uh, in the city of London, kind of goes out into Surrey, round a few, round a few kind of hills, up and down, um, and then back round. But um, it's 100% closed roads. Um, I guess the thing that it's most similar to is probably the London Marathon, so it's kind of a ballot entry. Um, and I think there's normally about 35 to 40,000 in terms of the entries. Um, uh, and I think actually in terms of the number of people who actually put in for the ballot, it's probably double or maybe even three times that. So it's a pretty sought after event. Um, it's not cheap, um, but nonetheless, it is well organised. Um, can't knock it for that. Um, and uh, yeah, it's definitely one that if you can and you can find the time and you manage to get in through the ballot, then it's definitely a ride that's worth doing. Um, so I've done this twice, I'm not in for it this year. Um, the footage that you'll see kind of during this part and then um, the subsequent parts, which I'll talk about in a second, they were all recorded during the 2017 ride. Um, and I think prior to that, I did it in 2014. So the intention of these videos, um, I did think about doing it as a single part episode. Uh, in reality, it was going to come in at about 40, 45 minutes, um, which is quite a long time really to you know, listen to me, um, and then also actually, potentially some people will have already um, ridden certain parts of this route. So the aim being, I'm gonna break this down into three different videos. Um, episode one will be Newlands Corner, episode two, Leaf Hill, and then number three will be Box Hill, and kind of the run into the finish, um, and a few things to kind of point out um, along the way. So we'll kick off with this episode, um, part one, Newlands Corner. Okay, so just before we get into the footage of um, Newlands Corner, uh, I'll just wrap things up around the actual start itself because I know there's a couple of concerns with people who are riding in a group, um, but potentially they might get kind of different start times and want to sit up. So footage that you were just seeing there, that's kind of the end of the start, if that makes sense. Um, and generally, people will wait somewhere around that kind of first corner. So it swings around to the right and then to the left, and then normally you'll see there's a kind of group of riders normally in the middle of the road there's kind of chevrons and that's often where people wait up so um i guess two things if you're looking to wait for somebody then that's where to do it but then equally also just be mindful because um yeah there will be riders kind of in the middle of the road or even at the side of the road uh, and the other thing then to mention is um if you're planning on passing anybody um a few words that you'd need to you know learn and just become second nature is on your right just to let riders know so we'll kick off into this climb um for me this is where having done the route twice this is where i consider the start of newlands corner to actually be and um, this is fairly short probably about four and a half to five and a half minutes in length kind of depending on your pace um it's kind of billed as the easiest of of the three climbs um to me, it's probably uh, my least favourite as well. Um, I didn't ride this particularly well actually last year, and you'll see there's a quite a few no-nos in terms of you know uh, what my metrics are actually saying. But I'm not going to critique my own performance in this. This is really to give everybody a look at this climb if you've never done it before, or if you're doing Ride London. Um, so this comes at around about 46 miles in. Up to this point, it's been largely flat. There's been a kind of a couple of tunnels as you're leaving the city, um, but by and large, it's pretty flat. Um, so you should have been able to maintain a fairly comfortable pace for you. Um, and I, I'm not talking about going fast. I'm talking about being consistent. Um, you know, it's opportunity during that kind of first 40 plus miles to really just be consistent in terms of your pedaling. A couple of sharp bends, but other than that, and you know, having to accelerate out those corners. Um, yeah, pretty consistent. So as I said, this is the least or my least favourite of the um, three climbs. Um, it's pretty nondescript. It um, it's not particularly steep. It's not particularly long. Um, but because there's kind of these high sides, it's yeah, it's not great. There's nothing really to look at. Um, one positive thing with this is that the end of this climb is actually clearly marked, um, and I'll talk about that in a second. So. Yeah, I would envisage that for most people, it's probably going to take around about the five-minute mark. 
um, and um, it, it kind of peaks up at around about seven or eight percent. So actually, the way to ride this kind of 46 miles in, and knowing that you've got two, at least on paper, worse hills coming up, one of them definitely is, um, is actually just to be consistent. So. Um, it really doesn't matter about kind of setting an electric pace. You're not even halfway through the ride yet. Um, so find a nice easy gear, something that's keeping you moving forward, um, but just sit up and keep turning the pedals. That's, in my opinion, the right way to actually ride this. Um, I was going for an overall kind of time. So, um, yeah, I really didn't ride this climb well. But as I said, I'm not going to kind of critique my own performance in this. This is really about giving people you know, a better look at the climb and, and kind of, you know, what's going on really. Um, so road surface wise, the, actually this one's pretty good and the road is nice and wide. Um, in the most part, you would probably get a number of riders um, depending on kind of your start time and what the mix of cyclists actually like. But I would envisage probably about a third to half of the way up um, is when you'll start to see people kind of drop um and uh, you know dismount and actually start walking um, equally you've got some very smart riders who you know are just uh, I guess determined not to get off and want to cycle to the top um, but they go for your, you know for a really easy gear and just shift themselves over to the left hand side of the road and yeah just keep out of everybody's way and um, I guess meet their own goal so we're actually coming to the end of the uh, steep part of the climb now um, and as mentioned before, you will actually know that you're coming to the end um, and also there is a pretty clear kind of marking in terms of where it actually ends. So when you start to see this opening here on the left hand side, um, you'll notice that it actually starts to flatten out and um, because you've been kind of riding at six, seven, eight percent, um, as you get into this one, two, three percent, it's, it's going to feel pretty flat. Um, it obviously isn't, but um, it's going to feel like it is compared to what you've just gone through over the last sort of two and a half minutes or so. Um, so yeah, you saw the opening on the left hand side, you'll start to see these markings then for this um, feed station. Um, actually, when you get to the very top, there is a hub, uh, as they call it, as a part of the ride organizers um, kind of explanation or categorization of, uh, of the feed station. So there is actually a hub here. Um, one thing to be very mindful of is because riders will have pulled in there, that also means that you're gonna have riders actually joining as well. Um, and these guys will be people who have already gone up the hill and they'll have already stopped and they'll have freshened up a little bit. So they're kind of raring to go again. Um, so they filter in from the right hand side. There is actually a filter area um, but what you've got is you've got riders trying to leave to actually go into the hub and then you've also got people leaving the hub to rejoin the route. So my advice here is if you're not stopping, keep to the left. Um, then that way the only thing that you kind of have to watch out for are the riders in front of you who have been moving a little bit slower and actually have no intention of rejoining. You see the road just went quite narrow there because there's that metal railing. Um, having done the ride twice, it's been pretty consistent both times. So that's episode one, Newlands Corner. Any comments, questions, drop them in the section below. Big thumbs up and look out for episodes two and three coming soon.